Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 7th generation BMW 7 series. This is the G70, the 740i M Sport. And you must be feeling that the design of this car is really weird when you see it in pictures or in videos. But trust me, it looks even worse in person because look at the design. What's wrong with BMW? How does it design such bad looking cars these days? Anyways, let's open the engine bay because we have got petrol power here. Strut brace right there. Says BMW here, six cylinder. That's the reason we have got six of these. And the BMW logo has been given. I mean, it's so dirty right now. I don't know why. Washer fluid goes in right there. Strut braces, quite a lot of them. The engine is vocal right now at idle. And they have obviously given insulation and all that. But nobody really cares. Let's just shut this. Now, the design might remind you of the X7. Because the light is very similar. However, it gets a lot of tech similar to the iX. Firstly, this comes out to clean the front parking camera. The grill opens when it needs to breathe. The i7 actually gets a blue tinge right here to tell you that it is electric. It gets six ultrasonic sensors at the front for parking, of course. Meanwhile, the number plate is quite lower down and there are active air curtains. So this is very much active for better airflow. Now, these are Swarovski crystals. Yes, it actually sparkles, which is amazing because who puts such expensive stuff when the chances of theft are very high because the value of this is going to be really very high. Anyways, these are the main lights. It says BMW LED on the inside. So the lights are really nice. In fact, the light also does a sort of dance when you unlock the car. Now, this is a huge car, like massive because the length is almost 5.4 meters. That's a lot. The wheelbase is more than 3.2 meters. There are not many design elements on this car as such. So yes, it's just like a big slab of metal all around. This being the M Sport has M written here on the front fender. It also gets blue colored brake calipers with M written right there. Alloy wheel design is fine, but I think these aero bits have been added. I don't know why everything is so dirty. The tire size at the front, 255, 45, 20s. These are Bridgestone tires, of course. There's a camera here, but there's no projection happening from the mirrors of the BMW logo at night. No, that doesn't happen. In fact, it projects something from right there, sort of a curtain, which actually keeps moving all the time, which is quite weird. But at least there's something different. In fact, there's some treatment here as well. That is the shark fin antenna, a little different. The rear tires are bigger, of course. It has M badging right here. So a lot of M badging here and there. The rear tire size 285, 40, 20s. Again, blue colored M brick calipers here. Fuel goes in right here. This is the petrol, so it doesn't need to have add blue. Coming to the rear, again, it's an evolution of the older 7 Series. Definitely looks better at the rear. Again, not many badging as such. It just says 740i. Chrome treatment here. The lights do this welcome thing as well, which is quite good. Some design treatment here with BMW written right there. You can't see the exhaust because they're hidden right below. Yeah, the exhaust is here as well as here. So, Fassel Khan's fingers are too disappointed that BMW also started doing hidden exhaust. This is obviously for the towing hook. Six ultrasonic sensors for the parking, of course. And if you press this button, the boot opens. But if you notice, this is the BMW logo and the camera here. This comes out to clean the camera as well. No dynamic swipe function here. Let's open the boot by pressing a button. One of the most useless boots in the world because the spare wheel has been placed right on top, which is not full size because this is 155, 80, 19. And it doesn't seem to be an alloy. Probably it is an alloy, but the toolkit has been placed on top. Some storage space here, I think. Here you have the first aid kit. Yes, the first aid kit has been placed right inside along with the towing hook that is. And that's about it. A hook here as well as here. But the boot is around 500 liters. You really can't use it. Warning triangle and it obviously gets the powered function too. So what do you think about the design of the new BMW 7 series? I'm honestly a bit disappointed to be honest with you guys. And there's a reflector here. The i7 has a button on the key which actually makes it open the doors electrically. And if you see the key of this vehicle, it's the same as other BMW cars. I think this is a tracker. So BMW knows what I'm up to. Meanwhile, this is to lock the car, this is to unlock the car, and this is to open the boot of the vehicle. And I think this is something you can change or probably for the hazards. But the key is not working properly. The previous generation model, the G12, which was sold in India, had a remote key with which you could move the car ahead and behind. But none of that in the new model. With the app, you can obviously move it ahead or behind. But come on, we need better stuff here. The i7 or certain variants of this car also have a request sensor here. Not a request sensor, a parking sensor or ultrasonic sensor so that it can do a lot more things. <laughs> Let's get inside because this is a 7 series. So obviously it has got good amount of space. So this is the rear seat. Now you can get the option of vegan leather as well in case you eat vegetarian food. And door pockets are big enough here. Diamond speakers, yeah, Bowers and Wilkins diamond speakers. This car has got 36 speakers with 1965 watt output, 40 sound, and it even has exciters in the seats. Listen to this song. Yes. 
Now of course it's just a coincidence that this song was playing. Anyways, quality and all is very good, but BMW has taken all the buttons and thrown it somewhere in that bush because now everything is reliant on the touchscreen. First and foremost, you can see there's good amount of space. Yeah, space is really very good. And under thigh support is also decent, but don't worry, with the touch of a button, we can change that as well. Now, this is to open the door. However, that is the backup one because it opens electrically using this button. I mean, you have to push it. But in the i7, it opens automatically, which is quite good. There's a screen here. This is a 5.5 inch screen. There's another one there, 5.5 inch screen. You can do a lot with this screen. So here it tells me phone, modes, display seats, blinds and light. So I can change the blinds. I can open all the blinds with the touch of a button. There you see all the blinds are opening. Yeah, that's kind of cool, but I don't understand why I simply cannot press this button to close the blinds. I have to rely on all this. So we are going to close all the blinds because it's super duper hot. Here you get AC vents. Hook doesn't get height adjustable seat belts at the front. And I'm just closing the sun blind here. Now you can obviously see a screen right here, which is the theater screen. In order to open it, all I have to do is press this button and get into it, fold down. Now it will move ahead and it will fold. Now this is a 31.3 inch HD screen, not HD, 8K screen. Yes, 8K freaking screen which has provision for Fire TV, which is Amazon Fire, which is inbuilt, say, theater screen is what it says. And uh, there it's going to show this display, which BMW usually does with all the screens possible because it does it with the front screen for sure. Come on, make it fast. We are in a hurry. I have to leave for Panvel as well. Okay, this is taking some time, but here is something I can actually control. So multiple uh, modes I have for the screen. So I'm just going to get to the best mode, which is 32 is to nine, which is the full screen mode. and now you see, yes, this is amazing. So it says you are offline, so I have to connect to a Wi-Fi. This helps me connect to Prime Video, Netflix, YouTube and all that. And I can see a movie here. I can connect it to headphones as well to listen via Bluetooth. So that's kind of amazing. And then I can move the angle of the screen. So somewhere here is option of changing it there. Yeah, fantastic. Never seen something like this, have you? Now in this particular screen, I can do a lot of things like get into seat. There's a massage function and there are multiple massage functions for me. So I can change which kind of massage I want, which is the same thing as the front too. And I can change the intensity and the speed. So that's something which is the same everywhere. I want to turn off the massage. Okay, let's get into adjustment. If I press this button, just notice what happens. This seat will keep going ahead and it will go all the way ahead. It's a bit too slow to operate, but it will just keep going ahead. It says set lounge position because this is the executive lounge seat, only this one. It doesn't happen with this one because then how will the driver drive the car? He will fold into the steering wheel and trigger the airbag, of course. Now there's so much legroom here because of this. So it'll keep going ahead. And then this thing will also retract. Pardon the sweat, it's super hot. Yeah, there it is retracting. And there's a warning which is coming on the screen saying, if your view is obstructed, just put the seat back or at least accept you're doing the stupidity. Now this will rise up. This is not a Maybach, yet there's so much space that someone as tall as me can also clearly and easily just stretch here. So there's a footrest which comes on from there. Now my legs are completely straight and I don't have to bend them. That is the kind of space it has to offer, which is unfreaking believable. This is just amazing. Headroom is good enough as well. There's a hook and a handle here. Meanwhile, you get an armrest right here. There's no screen here, there's a wireless charging pad and inside you get two USB-C charging sockets as well. Isofix child seat mounts, so I can just take it up to open the Isofix anchors. Let me put this back down. Center passenger also gets a head. I can adjust the headrest like this, which is quite cool too. And of course, you get magazine holders here, which are very aircraft style. AC vents placed here and there's some storage space right there which is kind of useless to be honest, but look at the amount of space. It's unfreaking believable. Let me get out of this menu. So it's very amazing, the whole quality of this. And then I can get into phone, I can get into audio, I can get into the my modes, which actually changes the mode. So right now we are in the relaxed one. If I go into eco mode, which is an option I don't seem to be having here, let's get into expressive. When I do that, it means that you're going to be expressing yourself. So it opens all the blinds of the car. It does that, that's quite cool. In eco mode now, it will shut everything so that it obviously conserves energy. This is huge, Well, that's what she says. Now, good bit is that as soon as I open the door, so here I open the door, the seat will automatically go down. The footrest will automatically close. I have not done anything. It is doing it automatically because it understands that someone who opens the door obviously wants to exit the car. So it's smart enough to do that here. See the warning. It says clearly 
that your view is obstructed do you accept this or you're going to adjust the seat because don't blame the car tomorrow so much space at the rear un freaking believable but this hump is so massive now that the center passenger is just not welcome in this car so it will just get back into position sometimes it's not able to do that it says close this theater screen otherwise it cannot do it if you notice there are these lines on the top because this is the bmw sky lounge the ambient lighting even comes here that is the dashboard again very similar to the ix but very different in a lot of ways let's get out okay i love the way the whole quality of the interior is absolutely phenomenal in terms of quality and it obviously gets the soft closed door function there it pulls it inside to shut it and it's a pop up for me because it did not do it i did not close it enough but this is glass it feels so nice to actually touch the glass and push it inside and there it will pull it inside to shut it as well with the blind now you can't see anything at all and that antenna is a bit different compared to what i've seen in other bmw cars ground clearance is definitely on the lower side but nothing to worry because you can raise the ground clearance because it gets s suspension of course Meanwhile you can see the indicator functioning here the lights on this car are absolutely amazing but the interior lighting will totally blow your mind because it's next freaking level The door handles are very similar to the iX so you put your hand inside to open it and just in case this electric mechanism fails there's a manual override as well so you can just pull this to open it and i think i have broken something so i'm just going to put it back into place yeah that's that now let's get to the driver seat because there's a lot to really experience in this car firstly it says m here this is actually illuminated the typical bmw brake pedal with an aircraft design on it you get a proper dead pedal as well lot of vehicle information here so basically it tells you the tire pressure including what is the vehicle number which is given here yeah it says bmw right there the full form bmw individual seats in this car i am just going to press one and when i do that notice how the under thigh support is going to go back inside the seat is moving and soon the steering wheel will also start moving because this is obviously getting the memory function and the memory function also works on the outside rear view mirrors so yeah you have to keep it pressed that's kind of weird the steering did not move so i think the memory function is not properly functioning right now which is kind of sad the dashboard looks beautiful and very different as well because if you notice in order to turn on and off the ac vents this is how you do it by sliding this automatic headlight so it gets this sort of crystal treatment here which continues here as well unlock the car lock the car and this is to open the seat settings yeah you have to do everything on the touch screen now memory function you can save up to two people settings and these are the controls for the power window this is for child lock of course and this is to get into the screen mode just to make a few changes like if you want to close this particular theater screen you can do that as well piano black so it really gets a lot of fingerprints very soon and it has been lined on the inside so if you notice one thing earlier bmw had the lever here but now the lever position has been shifted to open the hood right there these are the ac vents and this is how to control the ac vent so again this is very different when compared to before and everything is very minimalism right here yeah minimalistic stuff in this car so first things first i'm going to put the steering back on the top everything in this car is definitely electric and uh, if you notice it is the M wheel so three spoke steering wheel which looks quite different again buttons are less when compared to before let's just shut this okay pull it inside to shut it that was smooth and how do you open the glove box because there's no button or lever here to pull you actually press this button and when you do that there opens the glove box which is properly lined but does not get the cooling function does not get the air balance package either so yeah you have to get your own perfume in this car here you get two usb c charging sockets a 12 volt charging socket and some storage space a light here as well okay i know you're noticing the better car in my watch right now yes the s class is better because it's not having a polarizing design like this bmw 7 series it obviously gets a heads up display lot of screens this is a 12.3 inch screen this is a 14.9 inch screen so this is like a single piece curved screen which is fantastic it says boost here paddle shifters obviously for the gears some of the controls here are for the audio system and this is actually to get into the menu so if i press this button i can decide what content i want to see 
on the screen so i can keep changing that maps webs and all that the best thing here is that it has ar function so if you put navigation you can actually see the camera and directions in this particular screen as well which is phenomenal to say the least and then obviously i can also control the heads up display because it has got multiple modes like standard view directional view sport view and reduced view as well yeah easy to use these are the controls for the adaptive cruise control system this is for the indicator of course and that is for the wipers automatic functions for the headlights for the wipers as well cup holders here this is how you open them they're square shaped immune lighting is here as well there's a wireless charging pad right here and thankfully we have got the i drive controller here again finished in glass this is also finished in glass the start engine stop button this volume controller also finished in glass sort of a crystal treatment and so is the gas selector so phenomenal in terms of quality this is for the parking camera this is to get into the driver settings and this is to raise the ride height of the vehicle this is to get into my modes when i do that i can change through a lot of modes so firstly i get into personal and as soon as i do that the ambient lighting changes here now i'm going to come into sport it will tell me to activate it here and once i do that again you see the colors change here then i change this to efficient and as soon as i do that well it even changes the heads up display right there so lot of functions but this expressive is really very stupid i mean what is this digital art but if you notice the cluster mode also changes the colors on the cluster the ambient lighting all of that changes so when i get into relax it is going to shut all the sun blinds so that i am isolated from the outside world let's get into the theater mode when i do that it opens this particular theater screen which is already open right now and when it's open it doesn't let me see anything behind so it's an obstruction for sure and then finally we get into the digital art and that is how it is now it's opening the sun blind so it's pre-programmed and you can make some changes here and there as well so this screen obviously changes as per the modes which i will show you while driving this car of course and now i'm actually going to change this particular screen to sport mode because i think that is the best mode there are a lot of things you can do in this screen first and foremost it shows you the live view of the car so if i flash the headlights it does flash there as well and it obviously gets the illuminated bmw grill so this is the sport display which shows me how much power and torque i'm using in real time and let me just get back into this menu i can browse through a lot of functions here so yeah that's cool there is the my bmw thingy which telling me how much power and torque i'm consuming in real time but i love the way the grill looks with the illumination because that is super duper cool here i can get into the menu to operate a lot of things so there is something known as interior lighting i can get into ambient lighting and then make changes to the color but the colors are mapped to my modes so this whole bar changes color depending on the particular my mode you are in and if i turn on the hazards well it blinks red here as well isn't that absolutely next level attention to detail and if you notice this car does not have ac vents because the ac vents are right here so slim how do you operate them with this particular lever is how you operate them and then you turn them on and off using this so very different way of doing stuff obviously now i am just going to press this button as soon as i do that it opens this particular menu and i can get into the massage function because it has got multiple massages there's also something known as random massage so it will decide which massage it's going to give me and i can change the speed two speeds and three intensities as well let's turn off the massage so both the front seats get heating and cooling all i have to do to turn on heating and cooling is by pressing okay first and foremost let's get into the air conditioning menu turn on the air conditioning the air conditioning has turned on and that's how you operate the air conditioning if i press this button i can decide if i want to see ventilation or i want the seat heating okay the ac is a chiller so we're going to shut it for the moment it's very easy to use the screen because you get into this menu you can do so many things there's a digital key which you can share with up to five people then you can change the exterior lighting bmw messages personal assistant apple carplay android auto are wireless of course you can automate habits as well and it has got something known as drive recorder which is like a dash cam which will record all the stuff for you weather and there's a youtube app as well so yes this is a very loaded screen with lot of things let's get into reverse because this is the reverse parking camera it obviously gets adaptive guidelines in fact the camera also moves not really the software moves the camera is fixed of course i can get into multiple views here so this actually dances when it comes here as well so let's actually change the stuff on this particular screen by yes that is the g-force meter meanwhile let me get into more i can clean the cameras from here by pressing this button and i don't want to do that right now because it will dirty the car this is the panorama view here i have something known as a 3d view which is very accurate because the color of the car has been replicated here again the quality of everything is just absolutely phenomenal now this is a bmw so obviously it has got gesture control using which i can increase the volume and decrease the volume
the quality and all is phenomenal the way the finish has been done is amazing and that was i think some gesture which got activated headrest is amazingly beautiful with this sort of a wood treatment in fact it does not get soft pillows this particular model does not get it which is kind of disappointing crystal effect here they've put a lot of crystal like all across there is crystal so next level attention detail in this car and things are very minimalistic they've not overdone stuff so it's kind of easy to use but everything is reliant on this if i want to make changes to the massage press this button make changes here want to make changes to the seat press this button make changes here yeah i am not freaking kidding here i have to extend the under thigh support so i have to press this button and then only it works otherwise it does not work oh my god the screen has heated up quite a lot by the way if i shut this it shuts in the other direction so let me just actually shut it so it folds right inside so it's ulta because this particular sunroof does not open so it's technically a moon roof yeah it does not open because of this particular theater screen which also has an hdmi connection so you can connect it using hdmi to watch whatever you feel like it's a phenomenal idea but very distracting because you can't see anything there of course now i was telling you it gets memory function here so if you notice there the outside rear view mirror is changing because it is tied to a certain memory but why is the memory function not working here i am not really understanding so let's shut the car and as soon as i shut the car it obviously tells me goodbye fessel because i've connected it using the bmw services and i can pre-activate cooling and all and you can even take a photo of yourself using the app so there's a camera somewhere here which i cannot spot at the moment let's open the door every time you unlock the car and uh, turn it on it shows a sort of a display here it does a light dance also so a lot of amazing cool stuff in this car like they have gone overboard in terms of technology because this doesn't feel like a 7 series it feels more like a gadget to me right now and let's lock the car as soon as i do that obviously the mirrors go inside by the way if you haven't noticed it already this car gets adas functions and the sensors are placed somewhere here by the way there are two cameras here on the top for the lane keep assist and there is a camera here or not a camera it's actually a sensor for rain sensing wipers nozzle is right here so the spray comes out from there I'm going to keep this button pressed and as soon as I do that the windows will obviously retract yeah all the windows will retract and the rear window does not go all the way down oh it does go all the way down so never assume anything with BMW and there the sun blind is also opening so yeah the usual BMW stuff very loaded a car but does it really drive like a 7 series I have some bad news for you let's go Alright, we are all set to go. First and foremost, let me turn off the air conditioning system. I hate the fact that there are no physical buttons for most of the things and I get into the wrong place most of the times. Okay, just shut this. The most interesting thing is that I'm going to turn on navigation. Why would I do that? Because the navigation in this car is unbelievable. I just need to press this button and we will be going to probably say Goa today. So I'm just going to select anything which I see in Goa. Yes, let's go to Goa. Are select karna bhai, haan, start route guidance which means that here I'm also going to change something so I'm going to come into the map view which will tell me exactly when to make turns and all and just notice stuff happening right here we get into my mode straight away because I'm going to get into sport mode I will activate sport mode but I'll get into the setting oh my god the bolsters shut like this and we are going to turn off traction control DSC off only risky business happening right here and then we obviously have the power and torque meters right there. I get into drive, I get into sport, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. I pull this paddle, I keep it pulled. 10 seconds I have for the launch, hazard lights off, revving the motor. Listen to this, okay guys, listen to this. Ho, 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 the car is going all over the place. That is the kind of thrust. Yes, bro, I understand your recommendation. Why are you telling me to drive for 29 hours? Let's have this display back again. So yeah, uh, with traction control of this car, can take a full U-turn only, can go 180 degrees because this is rear wheel drive. I think this is the only version of the BMW 7 series which is rear wheel drive because the i7 of course happens to be having electric motor on both the axles which makes it all wheel drive or X drive in BMW speak. Now you just notice the navigation because I can see it in the heads up display which is phenomenal and look at this. How cool is this? Isn't this super duper amazing? I love it.
horn is also nice and loud like it should be and the wipers work beautifully well i love it by the way this could be slightly better in terms of quality there's a mirror there's a light of course but this does not extend like it should have but anyways on to the throttle this road is very slippery now that's why i'm noticing the traction is being lost almost all the given time so performance is very good but this is the worst engine we get in india i don't know how i said that the b58 is the worst engine because the b58 is a fantastic engine this is a 3 liter straight six motor which produces 382 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque yes this is the 740i which means that it is the same engine as the 340i and going over speed breakers is not an issue i can press a button to raise the ride height yeah it will take some time it is not available it's usually available below 30 km per hour which was our speed any which ways but then most of the time it's like i'm not available i can't help you at all so that's also a bit of a problem that the air suspension is very selective at what speed it works the air suspension doesn't help in dynamic driving it has got adaptive dampers it has got air suspension at both the ends yes it has got two axle air suspension which basically makes the ride quality so much better now i was talking about the performance it goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.4 seconds one second slower than the 340i which the m340i which has the very same engine but obviously this weighs a lot i think it weighs around 2000 kgs which is still around 600 kgs lesser than the i7 because there's no electric motor here which means that it's not going to have the weight of the battery it doesn't have x drive which means that it's not going to have the weight of the four wheel drive system and what a beautiful screen my goodness amazing bmw really blows your mind with all this tech because it's so beautifully done I really 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 like it and I love the fact that the engine is super responsive because it gets the 48 volt mild hybrid system which obviously helps in torque assist and reduces the turbo lag dramatically drastically actually there's no turbo lag to speak of because the engine is just so punchy throughout it redlines at around 7 freaking 1000 rpm and there is launch control too which does not work when you have the traction control off because you have to be in sport mode and traction control has to be in sport then only it works i have turned it off just to show you how the rear wheel is just keep spinning and spinning and spinning you can feel the push from the rear when you launch it aggressively and is it going to be like this forever this screen i thought it would shut but this augmented reality is just mind blowing in fact it even shows it to me here so i have to get into some view but never mind we will get back to our old view which is how the car is moving right now so top speed is limited to 250 km per hour which is good enough and this has a 74 liter fuel tank capacity with a fuel efficiency somewhere between 6 to 10 km per liter 10 km per liter is like on the highway when you're driving at 80 100 km per hour this has a fantastic mid range a stupendous top end rush and it really feels very sporty to drive somehow the 7 series has always been the sportier of the limos and this one is no different however it kind of feels like a honda to drive because you don't feel the weight of this car it's heavy it's big it's huge but you simply do not feel the weight of this car it feels so light there it is telling me forward collision warning So yeah that also comes now it knows i'm intentionally trying to come close to show you the forward collision warning light it will not blink the ada system on this car is fantastically done it has got automatic emergency braking forward collision warning lane departure warning lane departure assist lane keep assist you name it everything is there in this car and the systems are beautifully tuned for indian conditions because even if you drive like a lunatic like going right left and center which i definitely do not advise you to do it will still not kick in the brakes randomly like it happens in mercedes cars because bmw has nailed the ada system and even though everything is on early right now it's still not yet applied brakes on its own i can feel the vibration on the steering wheel because obviously na i am exiting the lane so it understands that now the heads up display is also beautiful it moves when i'm turning it moves and there's there's a lot of body roll the suspension is on the softer side but the ride is just amazing it glides on the worst of roads adaptive dampers work brilliantly well and that 48 volt system also works for the anti roll bars So yes body roll is decently well contained steering is a joy honestly it is so nice it is light but it gives you feel it gives you feedback and you get on the throttle at any speed the engine is super responsive now i'm on in manual mode of course so i'm just going to slow down come into a lower gear and just notice how the lights blink like that it is at 7000 rpm it will not upshift unless and until i decide to do so giving me complete manual control of things and that's something i love that this car gives me full control on what i really want to do phenomenal and i had to turn there the arrows are turning here and there what a system just supremely well done i'm amazed i'm beyond amazed how bmw is putting so much tech in its cars and everything works brilliantly well since we are just cruising along here it's time to change the drive mode so i'm just going to put the personal one just notice how changes happen almost everywhere to the cluster as well there it's vibrating it's pulling me back into a lane so you can change this cluster manually too by going into this particular setting and there is a layout setting otherwise oh my god this has become wider now so i can see the display ahead 
this car is a gadget on wheels it gives me so much information now it really blows your mind this is just super duper loaded now the various drive modes obviously alter the engine the gearbox which is an 8 speed by the way and it is very quick with shifts it also alters the air suspension so depending on which mode you are in the ride will alter in sport obviously it is more dynamic the way this car behaves so ride gets affected to a certain extent and then it also actually makes changes to the ESP system the traction control system of this car the steering wheel also gets altered in the city it is easy to drive it's not difficult because it feels very light it kind of feels like a 3 series it actually feels like a Honda to drive i don't know where the feel and soul of a 7 series has gone because the G12 really felt like a 7 series this one has been toned down so much obviously it is underpinned by the cluster architecture which i kind of feel is the best architecture for a luxury car brand right now because it's able to even take batteries so it's very dynamic in that sense but it just feels so light nimble agile and easy to drive it doesn't make me feel that I've spent 2 crores plus because firstly I've not spent 2 crores on this car and even if I had spent it I would not feel I'm driving a 7 series the soul of the 7 is just gone out BMW is trying to appeal so much to the Chinese audience that they forgot that a 7 series should feel like a 7 series it should not feel like a 2 series so I'm just going to get into the relax mode and as soon as I do that things keep moving here and there all the time which is kind of frustrating that uh, yeah there the cluster mode also changes but I am still not in terms with what nonsense is this expressive like what is this bullshit why would you have something like that i just don't understand only what is this yeah and to make matters even worse there is something known as digital art is this an instrument cluster or a wall because i don't like this and i don't appreciate this at all this should not be the case but anyways we are just going to come into sport mode because that is the best mode yes please activate sport mode i know traction control gets limited i don't mind it at all and obviously traction control will be turned off now it's the time to launch and you are going to listen to this very carefully so first things first we are going to get into sport mode yeah oh no no boost mode is on boost mode shut the boost mode shut the boost mode shut the boost mode yes shut it now we get into sport and i am going to come out of this particular menu we are going to change a few things can we should we yeah let's go full screen with this left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights on oh my goodness so much drama what is this okay hazard lights off and boost mode activated for 10 seconds it gives me additional power listen to this guys listen to this <laughs> this car makes me Santa Claus with the kind of performance it has to offer. It's stupendous to say the least. It's just phenomenal. The kind of wheel spins that a limousine like this one does, you would never anticipate it. <laughs> and I think I changed some modes, so I'm getting massage from behind. So these modes now they are tied down to various other settings like seat ventilation, massage, and obviously traction control and stuff. And I think you can obviously alter them if you so wish. So that's something which can be done. And oh my goodness, gesture control, no audio source right now. Otherwise, I could have used those as well. And making a quick maneuver, it's so easy. This car is unbelievably easy to drive. This is a car made for lazy bums who just don't want to wrestle the steering wheel because a seven series is all about the feel and that feel is completely vanished which is still intact in this car the mercedes s class yeah the s class still has that feel i don't know what bmw is trying to do this is the best 7 series ever yes it is it is the most refined 7 series ever but it's a 7 series which really does not appeal to the majority of the audience because it's trying to be a please all but it's not really going to appeal to the enthusiasts who want something which has the feel that feel is missing i mean it's dynamic it's smooth it's refined it's comfortable it's soft it's everything you would ever need from a 5 series not a 7 series <laughs> yeah actually the 5 series is also dynamic probably from the 6 series or something of that sort i mean i don't like it as much as i expected i would because firstly the polarizing looks i'm not a fan of that let's quickly come to the pricing of this car 2.1 crores for this one with 20 lakhs for registration and i think insurance would be 5 7 lakhs not that it matters not that you care about it because if you're going to spend 2 crores you might as well shell out for insurance even if it gets robbed you wouldn't care about it would you but it's so polarizing nobody's going to rob this car trust me on it you can leave it open nobody's going to take it away because the looks are like what has bmw done what is wrong with bmw how can you design cars which only appeal to the chinese audience it's definitely polarizing the rear is good but nothing like the g12 because i definitely feel it looks way better and we are going to be doing the brake test right now so listen to this okay hazard lights on quite sure footed the brakes are but left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazards off revving the motor listen to this guys 
so much performance, so much power. It's on freaking believable that a limousine performs like this, which actually makes me want to get into my modes because we are going to quickly turn off the traction control, rather turn it on into Sport Plus because now launch control will definitely work. And with launch control, well, this car really launches very nicely. So here we are, left foot on the brake, hazards off, boost mode on, 10 seconds, launch control active. Unfreaking believable that a limousine of this size is so fast in spite of having the weakest engine because globally you also get more powerful engines there is of course the v8 but the v12 is gone there is no v12 in this g70 7th generation of the bmw 7 series which is quite disappointing so the car actually was launched the first generation model was launched i think in the 70s and then the second generation came after almost okay let's get into the third lane it came after almost 10 years and then i think after nine years the third generation came but after that, every seven years, they launch a new seven series because seven series enough. Every seven years, a new model has to come. But uh, what a car. Absolutely amazing. The performance is really nice for something which is this heavy. Maneuvering this huge car in the city is a bit of a task because it's massive in terms of size. The only good thing is that you don't feel the weight of this vehicle. The bigger problem is that it does not get rear wheel steering as standard. It is optional, which actually changes the rear wheel direction by 3.5 degrees. But that should be standard now. Nah? steering centers fast so fast and then the car is sliding all over the place because obviously now rear wheel drive for the win it really is so exciting to drive a rear wheel drive car i cannot tell you and that also brings me to the fact that do not buy this car never ever buy this car because if you are looking to buy a 7 series you are better off with the 740d because the diesel is a diesel is a diesel a diesel is just so much better more punchy better in terms of efficiency as well and it just costs 4 lakhs more 2.14 crores is the price of the 7 series diesel and i hope they also bring in more variants now this obviously brings me to the comparison with the mercedes s class the s class is really very good but then if you want a better s class you can obviously get the my back but with the 7 series there is no higher version as such they don't have a my back type version with a longer wheelbase firstly the wheelbase of this car is already long enough which is a good thing because i can comfortably sit in this car with my feet completely straight which i cannot do in a regular s class i can do it in the my back but why doesn't bmw make a longer wheelbase version of the 7 series firstly this is the long wheelbase version they have a short wheelbase version they used to at least in the previous generation now i don't know i don't care because in india we always get the long wheelbase version take that china however the issue is that uh, BMW cannot launch an even longer wheelbase version of this particular car because if they do, then who's going to buy the Rolls Royce Phantom? So they have the Phantom to compete with Mercedes Maybachs of the world. However, for the cost of one Rolls Royce Phantom, you can get five of these because the cost of a Rolls Royce Phantom EWB, that is extended wheelbase, is more than rupees 10 freaking crores, even though they share the very same platform, at least the Ghost does, and they share the iDrive control and all that, but no touchscreen huh, in that car because obviously there's a a big fat screen here but yes they are very similar more similar than you can imagine but uh, this is a master stroke from bmw that pushing people to pay 5x more to get the phantom over the 7 series and that's the reason most people end up buying the my bug because value for money wahan pe bhi to important hai that said this is a very smooth car insulation levels are absolutely phenomenal you cannot hear anything inside the cabin that's how smooth refined and well insulated this car is i love it and there's so much grip on offer it's quite unbelievable how beautifully engineered this car is i just hope it had a personality of the 7 series because the 7 series is supposed to be having that feel which it doesn't because it always bothered me that a 5 series costs around 80 lakh rupees how does a 7 series cost 2 crore rupees is it two and a half x the car and i was like obviously not but when i drove the 7 series the fifth generation model i was blown over then the sixth generation model obviously blew me over even further because the g12 is fantastic but with this car i don't feel it's worth paying 2.5x over a 5 series or maybe what 2.2x over a 5 series to get this particular model because the 5 series is like a very good car only thing is they've ruined the 5 series also with the new design which doesn't look that impressive so go ahead and buy the older bmws is my advice or probably get the mercedes s class because an s class is still the king of the segment it has always been and it will always continue to be because even though it has some gimmicks and all that stuff it at least drives like a mercedes s class it has an identity of a mercedes s class this car not so much few changes here and there not really impressing me because i feel this is too much of a tech show happening here rather than being focused on performance and the driving field 
there's nothing to complain about on that front it's smooth it's refined since it's a 7 series for everybody it's definitely not a 7 series for me i do not like it as much as i expected i would anyways oh ho oh, oh, ho let's launch boost mode activated and launch control active oh automatically shuts nice it does sound nice yeah the engine has this Uh, also in the high end of the top end which is the top end of the rev range which is quite nice but i'm really disappointed with the fact that i get boost mode for 10 seconds in that boost mode only i get the full fat 382 horsepower without the boost mode they give me like 340 350 horsepower why are you cutting 40 horsepower god only knows so the new gimmicks are starting wherein they're saying that this is the horsepower of the car but you know what with boost mode you will get that for 10 seconds i paid full money for this car not just for 10 seconds did i pay that i took the money back after 10 seconds no now so please give me the full boost mode so guys this is my vlog of the bmw 7 series this is a fantastic car but unfortunately the mercedes s class is still better and if you can afford it just get the rolls royce phantom 8 and on that terrible advice it's time to end bye bye